Thank you once again on behalf of Santander Universities for joining us in the BRDC Clubhouse on this gorgeous Saturday afternoon where we have four people to join us up on stage for what I hope will be a thoroughly fascinating and very interesting uh, panel discussion. So please put your hands together. We'll introduce him first because he's already been up on the stage. Santander Ambassador, former F1 driver, world champion in 2009, Dr. Jensen Button. <laughs> And also joining Jensen on the stage, the head of vehicle performance at Williams Martini Racing, once a Ferrari, and a doctor as well, Dr. Rob Smedley, ladies and gentlemen. She was a former Manor F1 tyre and strategy engineer, now the deputy editor of Race Car Engineering. Are you a doctor? Gemma Hatton. Gemma, welcome. You're a doctor today. And uh, last but not least, the Deputy Vice Chancellor at Cardiff University, Ambassador as well for the UK's Year of Engineering, Professor Karen Holford. <laughs> Does a professor beat a doctor, Professor? I'm a doctor as well. Are you a doctor as well? <laughs> Just greedy, quite frankly. Um, thank you, all of you, uh, for coming along uh, today. Um, Rob, your first time at Formula Student as well, and I just wanted to get an impression from you as, as to what you've seen and, uh, and what you've made of Formula Student. Um, it's fantastic. I think it's a great initiative. It's like um, all the, the you know, there's a, there's a few initiatives that we've got going on now to, to try and get people interested in, in motorsport and in engineering in the STEM subjects. Um, this one comes obviously a little bit after um, that, that baseline for the, for the kids. But I think it's, um, it's a great initiative um, and it's just a great way to get um, you know, young people, students thinking about um, the way that they put, put teams together, the way that we put a car together, the way they would engineer a car. And, and, and year on year, you know, I've seen a little bit of it. It's not that this is my first ever exposure, Crofty. Um, it, it, it just gets better and better. I think it gets more and more professional. Um, and that's because of the, the, the competitive edge to it. So it's, it's great. Uh, alongside you, Gemma, you were a competitor at Formula Student. How did you, uh, how did you get on? What, what did you do? Um, yeah, so I was part of Team Bath Racing four years ago. It feels like a very long time. Um, we did really well that year. We came uh, fourth in endurance, seven over, seventh overall, uh, second highest UK team. And um, for a wannabe race engineer, it's the first time that you get a real a real insight into what the life of, of trackside is because it is brutal and formula student is just as brutal as uh, as formula one and um, it's good for you to realize whether you can take it or not <laughs> <laughs> and you went into formula one and you knew you could take it yes <laughs> sorry Rob, why are you sniggering there on that one <laughs> the pressure carry on <laughs> the pressure smedley um karen Defending champions, Cardiff University, pressure's on this year. What, what, what impact did winning last year have on the university as a whole? Oh, I think, I mean, the university was incredibly proud of the team. But I think it was more the w impact of the team on recognising their brilliance because, you know, they're, they're brilliant engineers, they've got brilliant backing behind them, brilliant lecturers teaching them engineering. And then getting the number one team just really um, endorsed everything they've been doing for the last 18 odd years. Let's talk about engineering talent, though. We've got a lot of engineering talent here. And I'm kind of looking out, Jensen, I'm seeing a really good mix, male and female, out in our, in our audience. Um, is that reflected across engineering as a whole? Uh, Professor, Dr. Ambassador for the UK's Year of Engineering. A um, friend of mine at MBDA told me it was a 50-50 split for their graduate engineers. Is that what we see in the UK? We don't see that in the UK, no. And if you're asking me this question in um, Russia or in Iran or in Eastern Europe, you wouldn't be asking that question because in those countries it is a 50-50 split. So I don't know what problem the UK has got in, in this respect, but it's getting better. So it's increasing every year. And I think now, I really do think we've hit that critical mass and we're over that lump where now girls just feel that they can do it as well. So I'm sure that eventually we will get a 50-50 split. Gemma, I, I'm sure you'd like to back that up, but, but give me examples on this one. Do, do you see more and more female engineers, especially for, from race car engineering, which is kind of your specialised subject now? Yeah. Um, 
So it's definitely improving. Just to put a few numbers, um, I did some research, and in UK um, engineering and technology undergraduates, only 15.8% are females, which is extremely low. And um, in my year, I was one of 20 females in a year of 200. So that was obviously a few years ago, and things are improving. Um, but it goes back to... Um, a-level subjects, so in physics there's only 20% of A-level physics students that are females, so they're not coming through the doors even at that stage. Um, but in terms of you know, in my uh, work in F1 and touring cars and wherever else I've been, um, there's been a huge increase over the, you know, within a season. You know, in F1 now there's at least one female on the majority of pit walls. There's female mechanics, you know, looking around here we've got so many female team leaders, technical directors, drivers, it's, it's really improving and I'm so pleased. Rob, you get people writing to you all the time, I'm sure. Do, do you, are you getting more letters from female engineers than you did, say, in, well, not just in 97 when you first started in Formula One, but, but, but throughout the years that you've been working in it? Um, yes, but I think um, nowhere near enough. I think we've got a, a, a real problem of, of image, to be honest. Um, not not in Formula One or, or motor racing, but I think in, in engineering in general, um, I quite often you know chair panels and, and think tanks of, of of very young people you know when they're 12, 13 and, and thinking about um, what whether or not they're going to take you know go forward with with STEM subjects and I think that the image that that engineering has um, of being staid and old fashioned and you know, you, you call an engineer um, and he comes around and fixes your fridge. Well, well, we don't do that. We do some of the most brilliant things in the world. You know, we put um, rockets into space and we put them on the racetrack as well. Um, and I think that, you know, we've, we've still got that image um, where we've still got an image problem where, that we really need to work on. Um, we get nowhere near enough um, females in, in the Formula One workplace. I think, you know, as... as, as as Gemma and Karen said, it's 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 better, but it's it's nowhere near enough. And I I, I always try to get um, as many females in into my group as as, as possible. Um. And also, being an engineer, <laughs> being an engineer is cool. Yeah. How cool is he? Well, he is. Hey? Not very. <laughs> anyway. I was trying. <laughs> But I think that because I think that they have a, a you know when 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 young lads make it to Formula One, there's this real and 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 Jens will back this up. They, 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 we're all alpha males, you know what I mean? Especially when we're in our early twenties and we're all kings of the world and alpha males. And you put girls in that mix, and I think they just act much more as the control rod, you know, and they calm the boys down. And and what you get is a much better product. Jebba's really smiling next to you there. Yeah, a little <laughs> grin there. Um, the, uh, yeah. With any industry, with any workplace, diversity is a key factor to succeed and be successful. And um, yeah, obviously it, the ratios aren't great, but it is interesting, the, as I'm sure you know, the, the different approach a female has to whatever task, the, the calmness that sometimes can happen when uh, or that is sometimes required um, trackside. So I think, you know, there is, they have a real value. It's not that they're not valuable, it's just the fact they're not coming through the doors early enough for me. Mm. I, I, I disagree. For me, females are a lot more aggressive when it comes to competitiveness in, in motorsport. The engineers oh, are so, so, so competitive. It's amazing. It really is. It's good to see. Competitive but calm, I think. No, just competitive. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need to come trackside, Karen. And, 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 I, and I just get the feeling engineering needs Formula One as almost the sport as a role model to make engineering sexy. Because that's, that's kind of what you're helping to do, Jensen, going out there, making engineering sexy, because you guys are helping you to do 230 mile an hour plus. There isn't much more sexy than, than our need for speed, quite frankly. Yeah, I'm not sure sexy is the right word. Sexy but, uh, is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic place to be. You know, After 17 years, it gets very tiring. But you get to, if you're involved with Formula One, I mean, you get to travel the world. You get to see things that you... You would never get to see in most uh, walks of life and most uh, most jobs. So there's that part of it, but also you're always designing new things and there's always new technologies. And 
Formula One's very different to any other sport because most sports don't really change in terms of regulations, whereas Formula One is always changing. So there's always something new to learn, always something new to develop and, and build, which I think you know, keeps racing drivers there, and I think it keeps engineers there for a very long period of time. Somewhere in Japan, though, there is a young man that developed and designed the double diffuser, which gave you the head start to win you a world championship. Did, did you ever meet the man that designed it? I actually heard that it was from our junior team at the time. It was from the Super Aguri car. Mm. They, they were, it was on the Super Aguri car. And then that, they closed their doors and we, we stole it. So that's where it came <laughs> from. But I mean, we, we also had, um, I never drove it, but when I was at BA Honda, we had uh, a car that was driven by levers rather than a steering wheel. Um, we drove it around Suzuka. I didn't, it was James Roster drove it, who I wouldn't put in a racing car anyway, because it's an absolute nutcase. <laughs> uh, very, very fast. And it, they put him in this racing car with levers instead of a steering wheel. A v, it was a V10 back then, 900 horsepower around Suzuka. And I think he was half a second off the pace in it. Um, wow. So, I mean, it's never, it's not in the regulations that you can drive a car with levers. But to have that idea and to come up with that idea of driving, and they thought it was more precise to be driving with levers. Um, it's, it's a great idea, it's a great invention, and, and you know, it's, uh, that's the, the special thing with Formula One, there's always new things to develop. New things to develop, Rob. How has the role of the engineer changed, or not changed, in your time within the sport? Uh, had, have we become more reliant on engineering, less reliant on, on the skills and the abilities of the drivers, or has it always been a, a decent, perfect balance? No, no. I, well, we definitely had it wrong. Um, uh, probably about five, six years after I after I started, when we had two-way telemetry, and we used to send um, stuff to the car, and quite often it was out without consultation. Um, so we just send stuff, and you don't even know whether you got it wrong when you got some expletives back on the radio. <laughs> um, but I think that we've got a better balance now, definitely. Um, it, it's uh, we're, we're not there but we've definitely got a better balance where we're giving it back to the driver. The driver's got to be, he has to be the the one, you know, you took, you used that word sexy before. Now, gents, I don't include you in that, but there's there's got to, <laughs> there's, there's got to, he, he's got to be the, the, the sexy element to it. He's got to be the, the thing that draws the, the, the crowds in. And then from that, it all funnels down and it becomes a, a, an engineering race. And and I think we're we're getting better. We're we're not there. It's a little bit like the answer to the to, to the last question. Um, what can we do to to, to make that um, even more, you know, put it even more in the driver's hands and 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 still keep that engineering element? I don't know. It's a challenge. You know, it's a challenge that we're we're facing head on at the minute with 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 the FIA with 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 Formula One. You know, the group that that Ross Braun and, and his people have set up. And, and as teams, um, it's a very, very difficult challenge. Karen, I think you wanted I to was come in. Say engineering is about teamwork, and that's why being an engineer is a fantastic career. So I think you know, in F1, if you get the balance of teamwork, where you know, okay, the d driver may be crap at engineering, but they're br a brilliant part of the engineering Nicely team, said. aren't they, Jensen? <laughs> but I'd just like to call you up. You, you've both you, said. You, you, you've both done some gendered thing. You've just said the driver he needs to do that, and you said, did you ever meet you know the man who, the the man who invented the double diffuser? It could have been a girl. It wasn't a girl. Uh, okay. <laughs> and all no, the drivers uh, are men. You. You're, you're absolutely right. No, I'm done. Um, I just forget his name, and, and I, I, I did read up on this, and I wondered if Jensen had ever met him. But the, the, the trouble is, historically, Formula One has been the bastion of, uh, of alpha males. That is changing now. Gemma, do we need a female driver to help the engineers? Do we uh, come through for the future? Do we need that role model behind the wheel, do you think? I think it would definitely help, but there are a lot of role models out there already. Um, engineering in the teams, like I said, mechanics, you know, the marketing PR people, as well as um, engineers on the pit wall. They are there, and they just need to be showcased a little bit more so that when you are a young girl watching the TV with your mum or your dad, you know, you see, oh, okay, there's some girls there. That looks pretty cool. Let's go. And that's what we need. And I think that there's a lot the media can do, like events such as this, um, that can help try and just politely nudge the fact that females, it's a sport for females as well on every level.